Life Body 7. Spirit Body is transformed physical body. Addendum. It may seem that the subdivisions of the human constitution presented in this book are based on purely arbitrary distinctions between parts within a monolithic soul life. To counter this objection, it must be emphasized that the significance of this phenomenon is similar to that of the appearance of the seven colors of the rainbow when light passes through a prism. What a physicist contributes to our understanding of light by studying this process and the seven colors that result is analogous to what the spiritual scientist is for our understanding of the makeup of the human soul. The soul's seven members are not abstract intellectual distinctions any more than are the light's seven colors. In both cases, the distinctions rest on the inner nature of the things themselves, the only difference being that the seven constituents of light become visible by means of an external device while the seven components of the soul become perceptible to a method of spiritual observation consistent with the nature of the human soul. The true nature of the soul cannot be grasped without knowing about this subdivision, because the soul belongs to the transitory world by virtue of three of our constitutional components, physical body, life body and soul body, and has its roots. 62 Theosophy In eternity through the other four constituent parts. When the soul is seen as a unity, its transitory and eternal aspects are indistinguishably bound up with each other, but unless we are aware of the differentiations within it, we cannot understand its relationship to the world as a whole. Let me use another comparison. Chemists separate water into hydrogen and oxygen, two substances that cannot be distinguished when they are united in the form of water. world, while our four higher members unite with the eternal. Refusing to consider this differentiation within the soul is like being a chemist who refuses to learn about decomposing water into hydrogen and oxygen. Destiny and the Reincarnation of the Spirit 63 Chapter 2 Destiny and the Reincarnation of the Spirit the soul lives and acts in the middle ground between body and spirit. The impressions reaching the soul through the body are fleeting, present only as long as the body's organs are open to the things of the outside world. My eyes perceive the color of a rose only as long as they are open and face to face with the rose. The presence of both the outer world object and the bodily organ is necessary in order for an impression, a sensation or a perception to come about. However, what I recognize in my spirit is true about the rose does not pass away with the present moment. This truth is not at all dependent on me, it would be true even if I had never experienced that rose. Whatever I may recognize through the spirit is grounded in an element of the soul's life that connects the soul to a universal content, a content that reveals itself within the soul but is independent of its transitory bodily basis. Whether this content is imperishable in every respect is not. 1. 64 Theosophy Matter what matters is that it be revealed in such a way that the soul's independent and perishable aspect, rather than its perishable bodily basis, is involved. The soul's enduring aspect comes into view as soon as we become aware of experiences that are not limited by its transitory aspect. Here, too, 
The important point is not whether these experiences first come to consciousness through transitory bodily processes, but whether they contain something that, although it lives in the soul, still possesses a truth independent of any transitory perceptual processes. The soul stands between the present and the permanent in that it occupies the middle ground between body and spirit. However, it also mediates between the present and the permanent. It preserves the present for remembrance, resting it away from perishability and giving it a place in the permanence of its own spiritual nature. The soul also puts the stamp of permanence on the temporal and temporary since it does not simply give itself up to fleeting stimuli but also determines things out of its own initiative, incorporating its own essence into the actions it carries out. Through memory, the soul preserves yesterday. Through action, it prepares tomorrow. 2. If my soul were not able to hold the red color of the rose through memory, it would have to perceive this red over and over again to be conscious of it. But whatever remains after the external impression is gone, whatever my soul can retain, can once again become a mental image or representation, independent of the external impression. Through this ability, my soul turns the outer world into it. Destiny and the Reincarnation of the Spirit 65 Own inner world by retaining the outer world through memory and continuing to lead an inner life with it, independent of any impressions acquired in the past. Thus the life of the soul becomes a lasting consequence of the transitory impressions made by the outer world. The Actions acquire permanence once they have been stamped on the outer world. Something that happens because of my soul totally changes the course of events in the outer world. Something far different would have happened to that branch that I not intervened with my family. I have called up a series of
of the results of our actions, whose character has been impressed on them by the I have a tendency to come back to the I in the same way that an impression preserved in memory comes to life again when an outer circumstance evokes it. What is preserved in memory is waiting for a reason to reappear. Can it be the same with things in the outer world that have been made lasting by the character of the time? Are they waiting to approach the soul from outside, just as a memory waits for a reason to approach from inside? This is only posed here as a question, since these results, waiting with the character of all time, may well never have any reason or opportunity. Must first be the imprinting, and then perceive its imprint just as 
it perceives something outside itself. In this way, the soul is the tutor of memory. 6. As the tutor of the past, the soul is continually collecting treasures for the spirit. My ability to distinguish right from wrong is due to the fact that as a human being, I am. Destiny and the reincarnation of the spirit 69. A thinking being capable of grasping truth in my spirit. The truth is eternal, even if I were continually losing sight of the past and each impression were new to me, the truth could still always reveal itself to me again and again. But the spirit in me is not restricted to the impressions of the moment. My soul widens the spirit's field of vision to include the past. And the more my soul can add to the spirit from the past, the richer the spirit becomes. The soul passes on to the spirit what it has received from the body. Thank <laughs> you. 